It's 10 o'clock. I gotta record some stuff today. Shouldn't take too long. Also, I'm not sure what's going on there. See, the nice thing about doing sessions back to back is I don't have to reset the mics up or anything else. I might change a couple things, but overall I'm gonna keep the, the setup that I had yesterday because it worked. You never know till you you actually start digging into the song and seeing what you need to do, but I think it should work. I want to show you something. So you know how sometimes you'll see like studios put a bigger bass drum in front of the actual kick drum you're using to get some of the sub harmonics and stuff? Well, I sometimes do do this. Like I'll put jingle bells or like keys. Focus. Jingle bells or like keys on a drum that's kind of by a room mic. And the reason that I do that is to get some like metally, metallic-y texture to like the kick drum when I hit the kick drum and stuff like that because it's directly behind the kick drum. I don't know if I'm the only one that, that does that, but it works sometimes depending on the vibe. Alright, I am done tracking the drums that I needed, or whatever else. I ended up using those guys, but just for the rims of the, the shell. I'll put a video in there of what it actually sounded like. Now I have to get another smaller kit and just put it in this room. This is where my kits are stored, and it's, it's not here. So I gotta go grab that. Before I load the, the drums and get out of here, I'm gonna make a cup of coffee. I'm just, I'm dying today. I don't know why. I've just, I don't think I, I didn't sleep very well last night. So I think that might be the culprit. I normally don't grab coffee from here, but I'm just like, it's just one of those days. While uh, that's heating up, I'm gonna go, gonna go load the drums. Okay. Water's ready. Now I can make the coffee. It's hot, but it's good. Just what I needed. All right, now that I got my coffee, 
I gotta take the drums in there. They're right there. I, like I said, I loaded them while the hot water was heating up. Doing this with one hand is kind of sketchy. All right, I am headed home. I gotta edit some some drums and stuff like that. I'll I'll show you some of it if if I remember. Also, all that's still going on. Going home now. Alright, just got home. I'm gonna get some lunch. It's, it's like 12 o'clock and, and then I'll put the tracks together and send them over to the producer. All right, it's been a couple of hours and I am about to send these tracks off, but I figured I would show you what I was kind of talking about as far as like just how I format or lay out sessions before I send them to people. And like I said, it's gonna be completely different depending on the producer or whoever's receiving these tracks. It's purely on their, their preference. So for this, these are like, these are the drums all down here and then where these colors change these are all the percussion tracks it's like this is like a normal perk track right here kind of sounds like this like a br it's a brush with uh, some sleigh bells and this is like the stereotypical like snare roll and then sleigh bells obviously because you know and then it just kind of kind of goes on further but basically the reason I, I do it like that is because when I track them, I just duplicate the the drum settings that I have. That way all the inputs stay the same, all the plugins are generally the same and I can tweak from there, but they're all laid out. And also like I can pick and choose what microphones I wanna use. Cause a lot of these have four or five different microphones that are actually picking up what they're doing and I just sum them all to a stereo percussion track. So like a lot of those those reverbs, those are all natural reverbs. None of it is a uh, is software reverbs. But I'm able to blend them with like the room mics and everything else to make sure it's still punchy but it has like enough air and breath for the song if if that makes sense. Like I said, this doesn't work for every artist or producer, but for this specific producer, this is what they want and it kind of gives them the, the vibe and all that stuff. But it's something I've been doing recently. I don't know if anybody else does it this way, but this is like the easiest I've found to do it for this this producer. Hopefully that, that makes sense. You have to be your biggest fan. And when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working, but there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that. Because you don't know who you're going to be.